Welcome back to the Essentially You podcast, all about reinventing your health with safer, cheaper, more effective natural solutions and powerful lifestyle changes so that you become the CEO of your health. I am your host, Dr. Marisa Snyder. Did you know that you are joining me for a major milestone today that I am so excited to celebrate with you? This is the 100th episode on the Essentially You podcast, and not only is it episode 100, but we are also almost at 500,000 downloads, which is, oh my goodness, beyond incredible. My heart swells with so much gratitude for having you a part of this incredible women's health journey. When I came up with the idea to create this podcast back in 2017, I had you in mind. Women who not only wanted answers for healing their bodies and hormones, but also simple proven solutions that could be implemented easily. Each expert that I've invited on the show, I have hand selected for you because I felt connected to their message and their functional approach to healing the body. I am committed more than ever to give you what you want and what you need on this podcast. Since February this year, I have spoken to thousands of women and listened to their stories. It breaks my heart to hear that women are being dismissed and told they will simply have to live with their symptoms. That is absolutely ridiculous and disheartening. Your symptoms are valid, and I'm here to advocate for you on your health journey. I believe that we deserve to understand what's going on with our endocrine system and our bodies, and that you deserve an integrative approach to healing your hormones, and you deserve a root cause approach to your health. Personally, I do not feel like there's enough resources out there for women, and I hope to be a part of that solution through this podcast, my books, and by introducing you to other amazing experts who are also committed to this powerful women's healthcare journey. Now more than ever, we've gotta advocate for our health and take our well-being into our own hands. But the great news is, is that your body is primed for healing miracles. I know it may not feel like it right now, but I have seen it over and over again in women that I have worked with, not only in my programs, but I have met in person. Your body wants to be well and function at peak capacity. And that is what we're gonna be talking about today and in many episodes to come. Now, as a token of my appreciation, I have a very special gift for you that I created specifically for this 100th episode. I have been wanting to create this special gift for a while now, and it just, well, it felt like the right time. Now, I've created a cheat sheet with my favorite hormone detox essential oil blends, along with a couple of my favorite detox recipes, including my go-to energy green smoothie recipe. Now, this is the perfect getting started cheat sheet, and you can grab it in the show notes at drmarisa.com slash podcast, or go to directly to the guide, drmarisa.com slash detox blends. Now, if you're looking for more recipes on detoxification, liver support, reducing inflammation, and my 14-day hormone rescue plan with a meal plan, recipes, and all the goodies, including my hormone trifecta, I will be linking the book, the Essential Oils Hormone Solution book, to this episode as well because so much of what I love to share is really packed in a perfect package in that book. Now, before I jump into food for your hormones, along with addressing nutrient deficiencies in this episode, I want to take a moment and I want to celebrate you because you deserve to be celebrated. Now, one particular health rock star who we are celebrating today is Sarah, and I am excited to shout out her win that she shared on Instagram just last week. Here is what Sarah had to say. Yes! I just listened to a podcast episode that said, self-care is about giving yourself permission to pause. And that changed my perspective in such a powerful way. Self-care doesn't need to be a big thing or a luxury. It's about my health care and how I take care of my body and mindset. Thank you, Dr. Marisa, for your little gems and the perspective that I get from your show. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. You are absolutely right, girl. Self-care is a non-negotiable. 
practically, it's necessary for survival. It's how we thrive in our day-to-day life when it comes to our health. See, understanding our bodies and how we create amazing health is what it's all about. So if you are listening, Sarah, I would love to give to you my Superwoman blend. All you got to do is reach out to me on Instagram at Dr. Marisa. Well, fellow podcast listeners, when you are listening today, you know how much I love to shout you out. And I can't tell you how much your messages mean to me. I love it when my DMs light up on Instagram and I get all of these posts about you guys sharing the episodes that you love. Now, I would love for you to reach out to me on Instagram, Facebook, or simply reviewing this podcast on iTunes or whatever podcast platform you plug into. Right now, we have over 250 reviews, which is amazing, but you know what? The more, the merrier. That way, we change the world by giving women solutions at their fingertips and providing much-needed information for women to take to their doctors so they can not only ask the right questions, but also get the answers that they deserve. In today's world, we have got to become the CEO of our health. Now, let's dive in to this episode, episode number 100, but I want to start with a question. How does food influence your life? Think about the parties, the social events, Friday nights out with friends, or maybe Friday nights in front of the TV watching your favorite Netflix show. Food punctuates our life in everything that we do. It's hard to realize our day-to-day life without food being an integral part of it. Yet, food is medicine and one of the most important elements to healing our bodies, our hormones, and our cellular function. To be honest, I didn't fully realize how much food impacted my life each and every day until Alex and I went on a 28-day detox about six plus years ago during the month of January. Now, one of the biggest and most interesting things that we quickly learned was how much free time we had on our hands when our favorite foods and wine were quickly removed from our diet for almost a month. Let me tell you, we read a lot of books We went to bed early because we, so many of our social activities involved food at that time in our lives. Now, there was a lot of positive things that happened during that program as well. I gained more energy, more mental clarity. I felt a sense of food freedom from foods that I was mildly addicted to. I mean, that detox had no meat, grains, dairy, sugar, salt. It was it was pretty intense. Those first 10 days of that program, ooh, it tested us in a lot of ways. But as we were coming onto the other side of it, wow, we felt so incredible. And the insight that I got from that particular program inspired me to look deeper into the role that food had on our hormones. And after years of research, I created a 14-day hormone detox that incorporates foods that not only support hormone balance, but also supports liver function and decreases inflammation. Now, the reason why I made it a 14-day program is even though I've done a lot of 28 days, 26 days, and 21 days, I know how hard it can be to get through those because life is so easy. And what I realized when I had done all of these different programs and detoxes over the years is that within the first 14 days, some of the biggest transformation happened. And usually by day 14, I really felt some of the biggest benefits and it was great to just continue those benefits a little bit longer. So I wanted to create a 14 day program that someone could extend into 21 or 26 or 28 days, which I know a lot of women have done once they've done it. So it just felt like the magic number that felt easy, that was going to get you the results, all the things that I mentioned, the energy, the mental clarity. If, if your body needed to lose a little bit of toxic weight, that would happen as well but it didn't have to take a long time. What was interesting to me was that using food to heal hormonal imbalances, which is a big part of how we need to get well, and it's also a big part of the essential oils hormone solution. In my research, I discovered a trifecta for losing stubborn weight, boosting energy and focus, and getting deep restful sleep so that your body can recover. This trifecta is nutrition, specifically how to eat for your hormones, self-care rituals, 
and the power of essential oils. You guys know how much I love me some essential oils. And the reason for essential oils is that they amplify our results and they give you those instant wins while boosting that metabolic fire. That's why essential oils. Now, food and self-care turned it all around for me. I became so obsessed with the role that food played in healing that it inspired me to write my very first book way back in the day. Yes, The Essential Oils Hormone Solution, it's actually book number seven. My first book was called The Antioxidant Counter. Now, I created this book as a great resource to take to the store or the farmer's market. Now, I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't one of my best-selling books, but I am very proud of it till this day. Now, if you can relate to a journey of recognizing how food plays a role in your body, or you're at a place right now where you feel like your hormones are not working the way that you should, Today is a great episode because I have some great tips on how to begin to balance your hormones naturally with food, and a lot of what I'm going to be sharing with you today can translate into other areas of your health as well. Because remember, hormones are just chemical messengers. Emotions are chemical messengers. I mean, my goodness, what I really want the approach is how do we heal the body on a cellular level with your gut, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, as I've talked about in previous episodes, our modern world lends to more than just feeling overworked and stressed, although those play a big role too. We are also exposed to daily toxins that wreak havoc on our body. Each day we accumulate so much junk emotionally, chemically, and physically. This leaves our endocrine system especially vulnerable to toxins in our cleaning products, over-the-counter drugs, and even personal care products. To the extent that the average woman is exposed to over 100 toxic chemicals each day, and it has a negative impact on our reproductive and metabolic hormones. Now, these persistent toxins can stay in our body for years, slowly creating damage that affects our sleep, our energy, our brain function, and even causes to us to gain stubborn weight that we can't seem to get rid of. It's no wonder that we can't lose weight even when we're trying to do everything right. And the solution to these mount ish- mounting issues is to give your body, gut, and endocrine system a food-focused reset. Again, food is medicine. It can shift everything in the body. Dr. William Lee and I dug into this very topic, specifically the research around how food is medicine in episode 95. And so did myself and my dear friend Magdalena, the author of Cooking for Hormone Balance, way back in episode 16. And mind you, there's a lot of other episodes out there as well. Those are just two I wanted to highlight today. Now, when we talk about using food to reset and rebalance the endocrine system, no surprise at all that it starts in your gut. And I have brought on several experts to talk about that very subject as well. But let's get into, I'm going to be giving you a top 10 list today because I feel like that's a good number to play with on how we can leverage food to help rebalance our body, reset our hormones, and have us feeling functionally better over time. So number one. If you eat foods for good digestive health, you already have a good jump start on balancing hormones. Science now shows us definitively that gut health equals hormone balance and vice versa. So eating for your best digestive health and elimination, bulking up good bacteria, reducing inflammatory foods will have a cascade effect that touches on how all of your hormones are produced and used. Number two is you want to begin with a morning ritual. Now, I have a couple different morning rituals that I love, but I think this one is really easy to do and really jumpstarts the digestive system. So it's basically apple cider vinegar and a water shot with a little bit of lemon juice. I usually do about a fourth of a lemon. And it's a great way to wake up your digestion. All you got to do is a little, a small shot glass or a little mini glass, mix together a tablespoon of vinegar, lemon juice, usually a quarter of a lemon, and three to four tablespoons of water. And the great thing about it is not only can apple cider vinegar kind of reset and wake up the digestion, but it also helps with fatty liver and gut health by improving your gut microbiome. It also helps you to metabolize fat as well, which is important because so often of us, so often we can be poor fat metabolizers, always because our liver needs a little bit of help. Now, I want you to choose a brand of vinegar that is raw and organic because that's really going to help the microbiome. 
Number three, you want to aim for at least 50 grams of digestion-friendly protein. That means doing your best to skip red fatty meats and maximizing protein from either chicken, fish, legumes. Clearly, there's lots of veggie sources of protein as well. Aim to be having 5 to 20 grams for every single meal, even breakfast. Protein not only helps you feel full, but those amino acids are important for cellular function and removing waste from the body. Yes, protein is necessary for detoxification and rebuilding cellular organelles. Number four, no surprise here, healthy fats are key. Guess what? They're the building blocks of all of your hormones and are especially helpful when stabilizing the production of your stress hormones, cortisol and adrenaline. Aim to get 15 to 30 grams of healthy fats every day. We know the healthy fats, extra virgin olive oil, which I have been consuming a ton of here in Italy, avocado, coconut oil, walnuts, almonds. You know, there's the beautiful extensive list of how to get healthy, yummy fats into your diet. Many people have trouble digesting fats and it can spike triglycerides if you're not careful. So take a digestive enzyme with lipase to help metabolize fats better. Again, a lot of us struggle as poor fat metabolizers. So let's talk a little bit about number five, which is the next tip. It just take a digestive enzyme. I'll tell you what, you will never ever catch me out and about without my digestive enzymes. Right now, we just left Italy. We are now in France. We have been on this European trip for about three and a half weeks. And we have we have been taking digestive enzymes with every single meal. And they are the game change for us. We actually brought two bottles for our five-week trip to make sure that we had enough because we didn't want to run out. Here's the thing about digestive enzymes is that we have a finite amount of them. And we stopped producing a lot of them in our mid to late 20s. And they are absolutely necessary for breaking down our food into smaller particles, making it easy to process and absorb nutrients. Taking one to two tablets of digestive enzymes with your heaviest meal of the day is going to make a huge difference in you breaking down those foods and leveraging them. Now, you want to look for a supplement that contains amylase. This is breaking down starch. Lipase, which is breaking down fats. Protease, breaking down protein. If you have liver or gallbladder removed, look for a product that also has ox bile. Although personally, I think having a digestive enzyme with ox bile is always a great idea since it helps with fat absorption and processing. Each enzyme is different, so you want to make sure that you do your research and just kind of feel it out. Feel out what the enzymes are doing for you. You shouldn't feel bloated or gassy or feel discomfort after taking a capsule. If it is the case for you, it's it's important to find another digestive enzyme. Now, along with digestive enzymes are probiotic foods. I don't necessarily think that everyone needs a good probiotic supplement, not that you shouldn't take that if that's working for you, but I want you to be focusing on pre and probiotic foods. These are foods that fuel and support good bacteria, the good healthy microbiome, which also helps to balance your hormones. Now, these are found naturally in certain foods such as kefir, bone broth, fermented foods. Oh my gosh, we are obsessed with sauerkraut. I honestly can't wait to get home so I can get back to sauerkraut because they don't really do sauerkraut here in France and Italy, at least not that I could find. Not a lot of fermented foods here. Um, Also kombucha, but I want you to be mindful of kombucha because it does have a lot of sugar in it and just a tiny little shot should be what gets the job done. I think we're over over using over drinking kombucha. I personally am a big fan of bone broth and fermented foods. I have them in my 14-day hormone reset program pretty much in the meal plan of almost every meal because they're so important. Now aim to have a serving or two of these foods each day. If you want to dive deeper into the benefits of probiotic foods, you can look out, go back to episode number 12 with Summer Bach. She is one of my dear friends and she is a fermentation expert. She is the the fermentation expert. Summer is amazing for helping to understand how to rebuild the gut microbiome with fermented foods. Now number seven, incorporating fiber at every meal. I cannot tell you how important fiber is. What I can say though, I mean, I, I, there's not enough time. I need a whole episode on fiber. But I do know that the average American gets about 11 to, on a good day, 15 grams of fiber, and it's just not enough. So let's talk a little bit about dietary fiber. 
It is found mainly in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, probably best known for its ability to support your gut microbiome and gut motility. But food containing fiber can provide other health benefits as well, such as maintaining a healthy weight, lowering your risk for diabetes, heart disease, and some type of cancers like colon cancer. Now, dietary fiber is an important role in gut health, and it also helps to regulate hormones such as insulin and leptin. Now, I recommend 30 to 40 grams of fiber each day, definitely closer to 40 grams each day to really ensure that we keep that gut healthy. Now, if you're not getting enough fiber each day, you may need to boost that intake. So good choices here are whole, I would say gluten-free, whole grain products, legumes, beans, fruits, veggies, lots of green leafy veggies, beans, peas, and other legumes. You get it. A lot of good plant-based foods. The more roughage, the better. Number eight, it's all about loving the liver. And you know how much I love to support the liver because guess what? Your liver is not only manufacturing hormones, but it's breaking them down. It's doing so many jobs. Your liver is a direct connection into your hormone health. And let me tell you, episode 50 on this podcast is probably the number one favorite episode to date, and it's all about loving your liver. Now, your liver is the body's master filter and detoxifier. It's where your body clears out all the toxins that you're exposed to. It's a powerhouse for all hormone production and metabolizing, and it keeps you healthy and humming. Now, if your liver is clogged or it's sluggish, it affects hormone balance throughout your body. And the easiest way to promote a clean liver is to include a green smoothie as a morning breakfast or an afternoon snack. And what I love about it is that green smoothies are, well, not only amazing because of all the fiber. Can we even, can we go back to fiber real quick? (laughs) But it's gonna help really support the liver because of all the powerful antioxidants. Fresh dandelions, parsley, cilantro, those are phenomenal for flushing the liver, especially that cilantro. Here is a liver green smoothie that I love in a blender. And I will have, I told you guys, I have that little cheat sheet that's gonna have a couple of my favorite green smoothies. Both are great for liver as well. One cup of chopped raw or steamed of spinach, depending on if you need to watch out for oxalates or not. One chopped beet, a chopped half cup of dandelion greens, a half a cup of parsley, a half of lemon squeezed, and a cup of water and a cup, well, a half a cup, as many ice cubes as you want, depending on how how icy you wanna make it. And this is literally a liver flush green smoothie. Again, steamed spinach, beets, dandelion greens, parsley, lemon, and water. It's gonna get the job done. And it's not the best tasting green smoothie out there, but I'll tell you what, if you're trying to help support the liver, it's the green smoothie that's gonna get it done. All right, number nine, protect your thyroid. Now we have a, we've had a lot of thyroid episodes, including my Hajimoto's episode not that long ago. The thing is, is your thyroid is so important to your metabolism. And you're, there are literally receptor sites for your thyroid hormones on every single cell in the body. That's how important the thyroid is. Now you can protect and support your thyroid by including some of the following yummy foods during your day. And the reason for that is you wanna look out for those key nutrients like magnesium, iodine, and selenium. Almonds and dark leafy greens are where the magnesium is at. You can get iodine by adding sea vegetables like nori or kelp three times a week or by using pink or iodized salt in your recipes. And again, it's really about figuring out what's right for you. We're going to talk about that when we get to nutrient deficiencies in just a moment. And then we are to number 10, which is focusing on creating a healthy, hormone-loving meal. Finally, this is so simple yet extremely effective and fast to a fast way to eat healthy at every single meal. So you can use a bowl or a plate and then divide it as follows. I'm gonna make it super simple. Now, if you're looking for a full meal plan with recipes, again, you know I've got the 14-day hormone rescue plan inside of the Essential Oils Hormone Solution book, but here's how this works. Plate or bowl, divide it into what as follows. Half of the plate is covered with non-starchy vegetables. You know how much I love those dark green leafy vegetables or the color of the rainbow, bell peppers, cruciferous vegetables. Get in where you fit in. A quarter of the plate is a healthy protein like chicken, fish, and legumes. And my gosh, we've been eating so much fish 
on our vacation. I cannot tell you. Yummy white fish everywhere here on the Mediterranean. But legumes are great as well. And one-fourth of a whole grain, if you can tolerate whole grains. If not, I do love sweet potatoes as an option as well, or I do love spaghetti squash, um, but a whole grain may be quinoa or brown rice. And then you're aiming for seven to ten servings of vegetables each day and limiting your fruit to one to ser- two servings. Although I will say in the summertime, because it is the season for beautiful fruit, especially stone fruit and watermelon, you know, two to three servings per day I think is appropriate. Honestly, I aim for a pound of veggies, of green leafy veggies or starch, starch-free veggies every single day. That is going to really set your gut and your hormones up for success. So now that you've got my top 10 ways to balance your hormones with food, let's talk about nutrient deficiencies and what supplements play a big role in balancing your hormones. Also, do not forget that amazing gift that I mentioned earlier. I have this beautiful cheat sheet that you're going to love with my favorite detox recipes, including that smoothies that I talked about just a moment ago, and it's drmarisa.com slash detox blends. Now, it's no surprise that nutrient deficiencies are a root cause of disease in the body, especially when it comes to our chemical messengers, aka our hormones. Nutrients are a non-negotiable for enzymatic reactions, hormone synthesis, and neurotransmitter synthesis. Cofactors, minerals, and vitamins are absolutely necessary for our bodies to function. And when we are lacking those building blocks, our hormones will be throwing up the red flag and we will start to feel depleted, stressed, brain fogged, and maybe even begin to start gaining weight. Now, the first step is to test for nutrient deficiencies. I lay out my panel, my hormone panel, in chapter two of the EO Hormone Solution, um, including a panel for key nutrients, because here's the deal. You can't treat what you don't test. If you don't know what nutrient deficiencies you're struggling in, there's no way to know what to take, how much to take, all of that. Now, some of the most critical nutrient deficiencies that I find in women today with hormonal imbalance are going to be deficiencies in magnesium, B vitamins, vitamin D, selenium, iodine, iron, ferritin, omega-3 fatty acids, and zinc. Now, those are the most common, but definitely there are other ones to consider. This episode cannot go on forever, so I'm going to focus on the big ones. So what I want to do before I dive deeper into supplementing nutrient deficiencies, I just want to talk a little bit about supplementation. Supplementation will only work in conjunction with a healthy plant-focused diet, along with exercise, proper sleep, healthy stress management. These supplements will not outwork a bad diet, excessive alcohol consumption, lack of sleep, overuse of endocrine-disrupting products, or even poor gut health. They can be extremely beneficial when used alongside the things that I mentioned above, but you can't take a couple of pills and hope that you're gonna balance your hormones without changing anything else in your life. I just gotta tell you that just in case, I know you know, but I just wanted to make sure that I just put out that disclaimer because I think a lot of people out there are trying to supplement themselves out of a poor diet and poor lifestyle, and it's just not how we're gonna get the job done. So let's start with these supplements. Let's talk about what each of these do and how they can benefit you. And the first one I wanna start with because I find it to be such a critical component in our bodies for a variety of reasons is magnesium. Now, what I have found to be so amazing that magnesium can help, well, if we are deficient in magnesium, we can result in risking cardiovascular disease, hypertension, type two diabetes, osteoporosis, migraines, and also we know it plays a role in depression, low libido, and fertility as well. Magnesium is one of those important minerals that we have got to have. Now, magnesium controls our pituitary health, and without it, we produce less follicular stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, and thyroid stimulating hormone. And these are critical hormones that signal other glands and endocrine systems to perform optimally. Low levels of those functional hormones can cause irregular ovulation, thyroid issues, and can lead to bigger hormone issues. It also supports the HPA access by maintaining healthy cortisol levels and protecting your body from the onslaught of toxins and free radicals. In turn, this helps to amp up your libido and promote fertility for a healthy reproductive system and unencumbered by chronic stress levels. 
Poor insulin levels and glucose balance also rely on magnesium, as does our body's energy levels, use of cholesterol, digestion, and other essential functions. It also greatly alleviates symptoms from reproductive imbalance, as I mentioned earlier, but also PMS. Though it can be found in a wide variety of foods, most people are deficient in magnesium and need a, some sort of supplementation. Personally, I love magnesium glycinate. That's going to be the one, and I typically recommend about three to, well, it depends on where you're needing it, but usually three to 500 milligrams per day. The next is B complex vitamins. Now, B1, B2, B3, B6, B9, B12, girl, we need them all. And they are unsurpassed as vital components to keeping your body functioning at optimal levels, especially where adrenal support is concerned when managing stress levels, uh, as well as keeping our sex organs in optimal condition, right? We know that. We know that these vitamins play a vital role in our overall health, but especially in postmenopausal when our libido may suffer. The complex formula of all of the, of the B vitamin complex keeps the body supported when hormones are in fluctuation, which is super important, especially as we're moving through perimenopause and menopause. Now, vit vitamin B vitamins are also super important for methylation pathways, allowing your liver to detoxify excess hormones or detoxify any, any other toxin that we got to get out of the body, right? We know that vitamin B6 in particular will help synthesize progesterone, lower inflammation, eliminate bloat, and reduce oily skin and acne skin. Now, I can continue to talk about B vitamins all day long, but just note that a lot of us are deficient in vitamin B12, vitamin B6, vitamin B9. Those are big ones for us when it comes to women's hormone health. So it's important to test and see where you are with that. But also I just recommend, you know, a good B complex and activated, remember activated B vitamins are what we're looking for, an activated B complex. Next, we've got omega-3 fatty acids, DHA and EPA. They play an essential role on our brain health and should be a regular part of our diets. Most people, however, do not get the bare minimum servings of fatty fish every week and do require supplementation in order for the body to have enough healthy fat to sustain neuro function and reduce inflammation. DHEA plays a vital role in strengthening the brain and supporting healthy function, while EPA impacts blood flow from the brain by reducing problematic inflammation. Clearly, both are super important. You know you can get good omega fatty acids. Just make sure that you read the label. Make sure that you're getting, a, I like Nordic Naturals is one of my favorites. So just make sure that you are getting freshwater fish and they've got a really great way of purifying the omegas. Next is vitamin D3. Just like magnesium, one of the biggest ones, research shows that when taken vitamin D3, it acts as a hormone inside of the body and can help reduce inflammation levels. A lot of people don't realize that vitamin D3 acts as a hormone inside of the body. Now, sunshine is the best way to get it, but most of us don't get enough of it. If we cannot get enough of it, um, I recommend taking 500 units of vitamin D3 every single day as a general recommendation. I take a little bit more than that. You're just figuring out what's right for you is important, but at minimum 5,000 I use. Next, we've got zinc. Now, zinc is another powerful essential mineral to improve period health because your body cannot store zinc. It's crucial for estrogen production and healthy maturation of our follicles, which promotes ovulation, which also helps make progesterone in the luteal phase. That's right. You can't make progesterone unless you ovulate. That's why we need zinc. Zinc is also anti-inflammatory. It helps support the immune system, supports connective tissue, and it helps to regulate our menstrual cycle if you're still having a menstrual cycle. Now, it's wonderful with combined iodine and selenium. As you can imagine, none of these supplements work on their own. They're oftentimes working together. And we know that zinc is needed for the synthesis and the activation of thyroid hormones. And another frontline treatment for PCOS and endometriosis, acne, period pain, and irregular cycles. You can safely take 30 milligrams of zinc citrate every single day. Next, we've got iodine and selenium. Now, this is particularly important for thyroid health. Iodine is imperative for thyroid hormone production, immunity, and brain function. It also plays a major important role in ovulation, breast health, and ovary health as it downregulates estrogen receptors, which protects our body from estrogen overload. 
Iodine has also been shown to significantly reduce polycystic breast changes and decreases risk of breast cancer. It's an excellent treatment for breast tenderness, although I will say that breast tenderness is a result of too much estrogen in the system. Looking at your liver is also important here, but it's an excellent treatment for breast tenderness, breast cysts, ovarian cysts, heavy period, fluid retention, ovulation pain, especially when related to an increase in estrogen overload. Now pairing iodine with selenium is highly recommended as the combination will protect you from thyroid damage and overstimulation. Take caution and speak with your doctor always if you're suffering from thyroid conditions because although this is an amazing treatment to regulate hormones, it, you may need a specific combination. It's just important to be looking at what is going on. One of the ways that I love how I get selenium is one to two raw basil nuts every single day. One basil nut contains about 90 micrograms of selenium or 129% of the daily recommended intake. You can also get iodine through a sea seasoning. There's a lot of different ways to get iodine in the body, just figuring out what's right for you and, and working with a practitioner to get the right dosage. Next, we've got iron. Now, iron is not a mineral to be deficient in. We need iron to support thyroid hormone production to make healthy oxygen-carrying red blood cells and to transport oxygen from the lungs to the organs to the tissues throughout the body. As you can imagine, it is important. It's important for the act of respiration and for making sure that mitochondria get enough oxygen so that they can create more ATP. Now, it's important to, I think it's important to try to get iron through iron producing foods. And you know, there's a lot of different ways to do that. So I focus on a lot of green leafy vegetables, a lot of plant-based foods are gonna get you a lot of iron, but you may feel if you're feeling very fatigued, having difficulty focusing, shortness of breath, pale skin, difficulty staying warm, lack of endurance. It's definitely worth looking to see if you've got a thyroid issue or that you may be anemic or low in iron. So it's worth checking out. Also, so often I find that people aren't just low in iron, but they're also low in ferritin levels. I myself was very low in ferritin when I was dealing with my Hajimoto's, so it's important to be looking at that. Those were the big, big ones that I wanted to focus on today were iron, iodine and selenium, zinc, omegas, D3, B-complex vitamins, and magnesium. Those are the key issues that I find, nutrient issues that are creating root cause in the body. As I mentioned earlier, this is a list comprised of the biggest nutrients that impact our hormone health, but there are other supplements and herbs to consider. Now, if you want my top 11 hormone herbs and supplement guide, you can go to drmarisa.com slash supplements and grab that supplement guide. It will also be in the show notes for this episode. I do cover other herbs, adaptogenic herbs, and supplements there as well. It's just another great resource to have on hand. Now, if you are still interested, you can also grab the detox blends and the recipe cheat sheet. You just gotta go to drmarisa.com slash detox blends. The supplement guide and the detox blends guide are both great. I do have a lot of this information in the book as well, but sometimes it's nice to just have a little cheat sheet. Those are the things I wanted to make sure that you could get your hands on that I'm super excited to be gifting you today. I just wanna say thank you so much for coming in and listening to this amazing milestone of an episode on the Essentially You podcast. I am so happy that you join me for just this conversation around hormone health when it comes to food and addressing some key nutrient deficiencies. Now, you are not going to want to mess the next incredible episode with Vivica Menengaz. We're going to be talking about the root causes of hormone dysfunction. Although we talked a little bit about that today, we are going to be diving even deeper to some of those root causes. This is probably one of my favorite conversations to have because I know how necessary it is to be having today. And I also want to take a moment and say thank you again for the outpouring love and support that we've received for this podcast so far. I can't believe that we're almost to 500,000 downloads. We'll be there probably in a little over a week. If you haven't, take a moment and rate and review the Essentially You podcast on iTunes. It would not only mean the world to me, but... It allows more people to cue in to how to become the CEO of their health. Until next time, have an amazing 